So our last talk will in fact be, our speaker will in fact be Heather Hogue. So as I was saying before, Heather uh, has her BA from, uh, well, she's currently a uh, PH candidate at the Pennsylvania State University and uh, in the uh, art history department. And uh, she holds a BA from uh, the University of California at Santa Barbara and an MA from Columbia uh, University where she completed her thesis on the Romanesque architecture of the Bourbonnais under the direction of Dr. Stephen Murray. Um, among the awards and grants that she has received, uh, mention should be made of the Schwartz Endowed Fellowship for Dissertation uh, Research. And she's going to be speaking today, see the title of her paper is, uh, The Towers of Chefalu, The Display of Power in Roger II's New Kingdom. Okay. Thank you, Linda, and thank you for including me in the symposium and giving me the opportunity to present uh, my, the ideas I'm currently working on. Before the start of the Norman, before the Norman conquest of South Italy and Sicily, three major political and religious traditions maintained a strong presence on the island. Having become a part of the Byzantine Empire in the sixth century, Sicily was governed by the Greeks until the Muslim conquest in 827. After the Norman conquest in the late 11th century, Sicily maintained its multicultural character with the court of King Roger II, including not only Normans, but also Islamic officials. The Cathedral of Cefalu was the first cathedral commissioned by Roger II after being crowned King of Sicily in 1130. Cefalu had been an important fortified port during the Islamic rule, but was devastated during the Norman conquest. The town was later singled out by Roger's admiral, George of Antioch, as an ideal location to refortify and from which to keep watch over surrounding areas. Cefalu was also the center of Roger's reorganization of the church structure in Sicily and South Italy, as well as his, his intended burial site. The cathedral has a massive east end with few small windows, while the west end is flanked by two large towers. This feature, usually associated with Norman architecture in the north, is not common in 11th century architecture in Sicily. This paper focuses on the west facade of Cefalu, seeking an alternate source for this design, perhaps within the Islamic culture of the Western Mediterranean. I also ask what significance the facade of Cefalu might have had in Roger's new kingdom. Cefalu is situated on the north coast of Sicily, halfway between the two important cities of Palermo and Messina. And it's not marked on the map, but it's roughly right in here. It is protected on three sides by the sea and on the fourth by an imposing outcropping crowned with a fortress and defensive walls. In 1184, Ibn Jubair described the appearance of Chefalu. Set over the town is a mountain on whose large circular summit is a fortress, that which I have never seen any more formidable. They hold in readiness for any sea attack that a fleet from the lands of the Muslims, may God render them victorious, might make upon them unawares. It is reasonable, reasonable to believe that his description could reflect how the town looked earlier, before the Norman conquest and after Roger had it rebuilt. At first glance, the cathedral appears to relate to the 11th century fortified cathedral of Catania, especially in terms of the East Ends. Both Cefalu and Catania have imposing chevets with few small windows, as well as the Benedictine echelon, echelon plan, also seen in the 11th century architecture of Normandy. And I'm showing you La Trinité en Com, which is one of the better examples of that stepped plan in 11th century Norman <coughs> architecture. This is where this, this, the similarities between the two stop. While the excavations by Caroline Brazelius under the floor of the Baroque Cathedral in Catania have revealed the organization of the nave colonnade, the original plan of that at Chefalu remains a mystery. The nave at Chefalu was not completed until the reign of William II and on a much smaller scale than originally planned. Moreover, while Catania had a separate single bell tower in keeping with the tradition of medieval Italian architecture, the west facade of Chefalu is dominated by massive twin towers, a feature usually associated with Norman architecture. And I'm showing you a fresco of the Cathedral of Catania because the single bell tower fell at an earthquake of 1693 and destroyed the Norman part of the church, the Norman nave.
Originally, the towers at Chefalu would have projected from the facade, flanking the approach to the single entrance. The lower zones of the exterior walls are built of large, regularly cut limestone blocks. This creates a monumental impression as you appro approach the entrance. And you can see that in the plan, the towers are projecting, and this original por this porch was added in the 15th century. In addition, there are firing slits in the lower wall sections, which seem to be angled in the direction of the harbor. This, as well as the massive masonry, supports the argument by Thomas Tiem and Inga Majbeck that the cathedral was originally intended to be a fortress cathedral. And it has been suggested by these two scholars that it might have even been connected to the walls of the town. The fortress appearance of the west facade has routinely been compared by numerous scholars to the monumental twin tower facades of the north. For example, saint Etienne at Caen. While the towers at Caen are not projecting as at Chefalu, the facade has the same fortified presence. In French Romanesque architecture, this type of facade is unique to Normandy in the 11th century. By the 12th century, the idea of the twin tower facade would have still been familiar to the Normans who had moved south to Italy and Sicily. However, as Emile Berthold pointed out 100 years ago, the situation in Sicily was different from that in other Norman conquered territories. In the Holy Land, the Normans brought masons from France, and these builders designed structures similar to those in Northern Europe. In Sicily and South Italy, on the other hand, the Normans lo used local masons. Since the twin towers of Normandy would have been foreign to the local Sicilian or Muslim masons, they would more likely rely on architectural forms familiar to them found in Sicily or South Italy, or in nearby regions. The twin tower facade is foreign to medieval Italy. Here, the common arrangement was a single campanile, sometimes freestanding. This is widely used in South Italy, including at the, the Abbey of Monte Cassino in the Norman Kingdom. And I chose to show you Mont the Conan's reconstruction of Monte Cassino since it's so important for Benedictine abbeys and for our architecture 11th century and on. And here you can see it standing off to the side of the atrium, the entrance. The Basilica of San Nicolai at Bari is a unique example in South Italy. The facade includes the foundations for towers, however not twin towers. This is helpful when looking for sources for those at Chefalu. This basilica was under construction by 1089 when the remains of St. Nicholas re were removed here until the dedication in 1196. It is obvious that the towers were built at different times and by different masons. This is apparent not only in the design of each, but also in the floor plan. You can see on the floor plan how they are not uniform and they seem to be stuck onto the building that's supposed to integrate it into the structure. While these aren't the monumental twin towers of Normandy or Chefalu, they nonetheless demonstrate that the idea of the two towered facade was present in the Norman kingdom of the two Sicilies. However, in, the, in each case, in this case, the local masons and styles are key in the design and construction of these towers. Conan identified a Lombard influence in one of the towers and what he called, quote, half oriental in the other. These styles, especially the Lombard one, relate to the people who had lived in Puglia prior to the Norman conquest. Therefore, it is reasonable that Islamic architecture would have been influential in the new Norman Sicilian style. Sicily had been controlled by Muslims for several hundred years prior to the conquest, and Muslims continued to live in Sicily after Roger established his kingdoms. The proportions of the towers at Chefalu have been compared by Pierre Eliot and others to those of the tower minarets in Tunisia, such as the Great Mosque of Cairo. To understand the significance of a tower minaret, the message it would send, and by extension what the towers at Chefalu could convey to the Muslim population, it is useful to look at the Islamic architecture of the Western, Western Mediterranean, and particularly that in Umayyad Spain. Emir Abd al-Rahman, who declared himself caliph, had the exterior elements of the Great Mosque of Cordoba remodeled. He had the courtyard refurbished using alternating piers and columns to create a look similar to the courtyard of the mosque in Damascus. However, the most significant addition to the building was the construction of a tower minaret. Prior to this mid 10th century remodeling, there had been a stair minaret present. The tower would have had a strong presence over all of Cordoba. Furthermore, as Jonathan Bloom has demonstrated, it is one of the <coughs> earliest mosques in which the tower minaret became a symbol of Islamic presence. The use of this form at Cordoba may have been a reaction to the Fatimid present in North Africa. 
For the Fatimids, the use of the tower minarets was unacceptable. When the Umayyads conquered Fez, the short staircase minarets of the city's two most important mosques were replaced with towers, demonstrating how the tower minaret had become a symbol of power, in this case of the Umayyad Caliphate. The tower minaret can also be associated with a display of the dominance of Islam over Christianity in Al-Andalus. The ninth century in Spain was marked by social and political unrest in Cordoba and the surrounding region. Christians were trying to organize themselves, embarking on a movement of martyrdom to fight against the Islamic control. Just as the minaret, and at this time the stair minaret, was a symbol of Islam, bell towers and Christian churches were considered a symbol of Christianity. During this turbulent time, the bell towers of the Christians were destroyed in order to assert dominance of Islam in Al-Andalus. Gerald and Dodds arg argued that about 100 years after the bell towers were destroyed, Al-Rahman III appropriated the form to visually show the strong presence of Islam, as well as to cast himself as caliph who rivaled the Abbasid ruler in Iraq. The Abbasids had developed the tower minaret independently and contemporan co contemporaneously as a symbol of their new caliphate while the Umayyads first used this, when the Umayyads had first used this form in Cordoba. Therefore, not only does the addition of the tower minaret at the Great Mosque of Cordoba show the dominance of Islam over Christianity, it is also an attempt to elevate the new caliphate of Al-Andalus Al to the same status as the Abbasid one in the Near East. Even though there are no surviving tower minarets in Sicily, this form was probably familiar to the Muslims on the island since it is found throughout the Mediterranean world. If, a Mus if Muslim masons did work on the Cathedral of Chefalu, it is likely that tower minarets are the form on which they base their design for the Norman twin-towered facade. It, is not unusual for it was not unusual for Roger to use artists from other cultures in his royal commissions. Gallons of ink have been spilled on the Capella Palatina, which we heard about earlier today. Um, this was a major building project under Roger, and served as both a private chapel and royal throne room. The interest in, the interest in using, the, using the visual language of the other cultures present on the island is apparent in the design of this royal chapel. The east end includes a centralized dome space covered in Byzantine style mosaics, while the nave, which had originally been the secular royal audience hall, has a mukarna ceiling made by Islamic artists decorated with calligraphy, foliate forms, and stylized scenes of courtly life. It was not only in Roger's building campaigns and that local artisans from his vast kingdom were used, but also in the decorative arts. This is seen in the royal garments now held in the Schatzkammer in Vienna. One such art gar garment is Roger's blue silk dalmatic. This, this style of tunic was a typical Byzantine garment. Over the blue tunic, Roger would have worn an alb, most likely red to imitate the Byzantine emperor. While we no longer have Roger's all, but we do have the embroidery of William II. And this is William II, the, the red and gold is the William, the William II era, and the silk is 18th century. The border here has two inscriptions, one in Arabic and the other in Latin. The Arabic script was embroidered by Muslim women and includes Christian words and an invocation of our Lord Aisha the Messiah. The most important textile in this collection is the so-called coronation mantle. Roger had been crowned King of Sicily on Christmas Day, 1130. The elaborately embroidered red silk mantle he has an uh, Arabic inscription along the hem providing the Hijira date of 538, which corresponds to the Christian year 1133-1134. A palm tree runs down the center of the mantle, separating two scenes of lions attacking camels. And there are two common interpretations of this imagery. One is that it simply shows the king's prowess. The other is that the camel symbolize Islam and the lion's Christianity. Therefore, this would represent the triumph of Christianity over Islam. This provides another example of Muslim artists creating an object for the Christian king, which could be interpreted as representing the dominance of Christianity. Based on the visual evidence provided by the architecture of Sicily and South Italy, as well as the common practice to, to use local artists in the royal commissions, it seems reasonable that a major source for the appearance of the west facade at Chefalu can be found in Western medieval or Western Mediterranean Islamic architecture. The men responsible for, get, for directing the building of this cathedral would have likely been aware of the social and political connotations of the tower in the Islamic world. This could have made the use of the form important to Roger's officials. The fortifications of Chefalu were already being rebuilt, making it one of the most important cities in the new kingdom. 
adding towers to his cathedral, designed in a similar way to the tower minarets in southern Spain and North Africa, would have created a powerful and dominant appearance visible from afar. This would have helped instill the image of a ruling king in religion, especially in the eyes of the local Islamic population now absorbed into the Norman kingdom. Thank you.